As we look at the Voxel Pinch Brush, you're probably going to notice that it falls way short of the functionality and the results of using the Pinch Brush in surface mode. In that sense, it's like some of the other Voxel Sculpting Brushes, not all, but some, in that they just don't quite measure up to the capabilities you have when you're working in surface mode. The reason for that is in the nature of voxels themselves. When you're working with voxels, you're working with volumetric pixels or little volumetric cubes in 3D space. The user will never see those individual voxels, but you will see an adaptive outer mesh being conformed to the shape or the changes you make to the volume. So as you're brushing, 3D Coat is calculating both of these operations. It's turning on and turning off voxels in 3D space, and it's also doing the remeshing. That's why it takes longer to calculate when you are sculpting on a really high resolution voxel object. Whereas in surface mode, there really is just one calculation. 3D Coat is telling these vertices how to deform in 3D space as the brush is being applied in that area. So not only is the performance better, but again, you have more surface level control. And you'll notice when I switch to a surface layer, I have almost three times the number of default brushes available to me. And then in the presets, there's quite a bit more. You'll notice when I switch back to voxel mode, much fewer voxel brushes in the presets than in surface mode. So I hope I've helped illustrate why the brush doesn't perform quite as well, but it still can be useful in certain circumstances. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. With the pinch brush selected, I probably want to choose the type of draw mode where it will affect either the radius and or depth and a sharper brush alpha maybe. Let's say we want to pinch right in this area to pull some hair strands closer together. That may be okay as you're blocking out your rough forms, but if you are in the intermediate to high resolution stages of your sculpt, that's probably not going to cut it. But that's okay. Even though I'm still in voxel mode, I can access the surface pinch brush directly. To do that, I can scroll to the bottom of the tool panel and in the surface tools section, I can select the surface pinch brush. 3D Coat will switch into surface mode on the fly while it's in use, so there is no need for the layer to be switched into surface mode first. Alternatively, rather than having to scroll all the way down to the bottom, what we could do is hit the space bar to bring our tools to our cursor. So let's choose the pinch brush from that. Let's first turn our attention to the pinch strength level here in the toolbar and make our adjustments. I'll change the strength level to something like 70. You can adjust the curve if you need. We can also click on the icon to the right of the radius parameter in order to bring up the tapering dialog. This allows us to adjust the amount of tapering on either end of the stroke or both. We can also adjust the length of our stroke before it begins to taper. So I'll disable that, hit OK. All right, so let's try it again here in another area. If I right click and drag up, what I'm actually affecting is not the pinch level, but how much 3D coat is either indenting or extruding. Now you may be asking, wait a minute, why is a pinch brush extruding or indenting? If you come from a ZBrush background, you know the Damien Standard Brush is good for sharp creases and wrinkles and things of that sort. 3D coat combines that type of brush along with the functionality of a pinch brush. So by default, it's going to indent. I'm going to right click and drag left to decrease the brush size, or you could use your bracket keys. We could turn our tapering on. If you access this panel frequently, you can assign a hot key to it as well. You can see how it quickly tapers. Now, some of these draw modes will allow you to utilize brush pressure to define the level of indentation or extrusion. Press really hard, I'll get a stronger indentation. Let's turn a steady stroke on. And you can also taper on both ends. You can add a second point. You can change these to hard point or B-spline, right-clicking over the points until it changes to the mode you want. If you want to delete these, you just drag them over another point. But I'll leave it like this. 
I hit OK. So it's tapering on both sides. One caveat I should mention is that when you're using this pinch brush, if you're in voxel mode, you're pretty much confined to the resolution that you currently have. And you can increase the resolution level if you want by clicking increase resolution or here at the bottom you could resample or res plus. But if you're in surface mode, you could dynamically subdivide locally using either live clay or you have some shift action menus to choose from. You can add extra detail as you hold down the shift key or control shift key. It's going to dynamically subdivide in that area. So you could give yourself more resolution only where you need it. So allow me to undo a few times here. Let me go back to the surface pinch brush and let's work in this area. I'm going to change my taper to default. Tapering length will probably be fine. Leave steady stroke on. I want to indent here. So it did a fairly good job. Now for the lips here, we don't necessarily want to indent. We want to actually extrude a little bit. So what we need to do is to hold down the control key and that's going to invert the action. You can see how it's respecting the surface outside of this pinched area. It's not being as destructive as the voxel pinch brush. And with that, we will conclude this overview of working with the voxel pinch brush and the surface pinch brush while still in voxel mode within 3D Coat Sculpting Environment. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.